Once we go live, and we are now live on the Massachusetts Beer Reviews channel of YouTube, um, brought to you today um, by way of Oscar Blues Brewery. So the so the idea tonight on uh, Happy Valentine's Day. The idea tonight was to review the beers of Oscar Blues Brewery and everybody um, bring a different beer. Now, some people I think are out with the, uh, the, the misses, uh, doing the Valentine's day thing, which is, which is good. We encourage, uh, family. Yeah. Um, so we were going to do all the beers of Oscar blues and everybody was going to bring a different beer. It seems that all of our panelists, which include Michael Komarov, you all know Hello. him, Brooklyn, New York, Jay Terrio, Louisiana beer reviews, sometimes referred to as Ron. Yeah. We all have today Old Chubb. So this thing, even despite just it saying Oscar Blues beer in the title, is just Old Chubb this evening. Now, Oscar Blues Brewery, as we just found out from their website before we went live, they started in 2002 in a brew pub in, what? where is that, Longmont, Long Colorado? Longmont, Colorado. Yep, and yeah. um, they're one of the first craft beers to solely um, can beers. Right. I don't even think they bottle beers. No. So, and then in 2006, let's see here, getting ahead of myself. They have a couple of different breweries around the country. They have one in Austin, Texas, Boulder, in Longmont, Colorado. And where Michael Komaroff and I get their beers, they were brewed in Brevard, North Carolina. Okay. Which is in the Asheville area, correct? In Western North Carolina, There's yeah. A lot of that's one of the big brewing cities in the country now. Yeah, I've been to Asheville. Okay, Brevard, North Carolina. I see that Brevard, eight percent alcohol. Ooh, uh, we did a Scotch whiskey um Monday, so uh, well, you know, I guess was that's that, not Jay, was that the Buchanan? Yeah, it was. It was great, man. We love that. We love that one, Michael. Look, it looked interesting. So dynamite stuff. This is dynamite stuff. <laughs> the old chub, they say on the website, I won't read the whole thing, but they say it's eight percent Scottish strong ale. I think it's just a Scotch ale. That's what the can does say. Eight percent 30 IBUs. Yeah. Um, that nice they're using a dash of yeah. beechwood smoked malt and oh. that's and specialty grain. So I think that the difference between a Scottish ale and a Scotch ale is is that the Scottish ale is 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 generally a lighter percentage of alcohol and is generally lighter in its flavor than the Scotch ale, which is more in characteristics of a Scotch kind of a whiskey where it can have a smoky, more of a peaty yeah. kind of a kind of a taste to it. I really like. I really like the way it looks, though, in the you know the nice the nice head. Yeah, it has kind of a raisiny flavor. I'm jumping ahead, but I couldn't help it. I had to start. Drinking. I got this in a. Let me show you the glass. I got this in a kind of oversized tulip glass from Shipyard. Now I went on the internet. I went on Google this afternoon, and I typed in. Um, scotch ale glass and they recommended a thistle now i guess a thistle is it's more of like a flute at the top and in the middle of the glass it has a yeah right like right, a bubble right. like a bulb on a thistle now here's my yeah. glass this is like a a stemmed tulip glass right there you go um what do you get for uh what, what are you getting on the uh on the on the color and aroma michael cormoroff Okay, it's almost like it's a very dark brown. You can see kind of reddish hues through it, so it's not opaque, and yet it's that very dark end of brown. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's lots of, yeah, there's lots of mahogany, darker mahogany red kind of colors to it. I wouldn't say it's entirely, you know, dark and non see through. If I put it through, Right. If you put it right up to if you put it right up to a light bulb it's it's very 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 dark red and it yeah. has that on camera it looks white but in person it looks kind of tan colored head and it's uh, uh, no, it's, it's gonna leave lacing it looks tan it looks tan over the internet and and 
Uh, you have similar similar thoughts on the appearance there, Louisiana Bay Reviews. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know about the red though, but um, I guess it's, I guess yeah, it's a, yeah, if you look through a light, you'll yeah. see the red through it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know it's like it's bordering purple, copper almost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I use a I'm, I have incandescent lights. Y'all might be. You might be using fluorescent. I don't know. Maybe Probably fluorescent lights. What are you getting out of the uh, out of the aroma there, Jay? Well, like I said, well, the aroma is a little metallic, honestly. But uh, I agree. I actually agree with that. It smells like a metal can. I mean, everybody says, "Well, you know, canned beer does not make beer taste or smell metallic." Well, I t I'm telling you, I'm smelling metal, so I know what I'm smelling. And it's a ball can too. Yeah. So I mean, I know what I'm smelling. Uh, People I, I'm, like getting, like, I'm like, getting a little of the metallic, but I also, beside that, do get a little bit of the other stuff Eric was talking about before. Some of that, like, peaty kind of, you know, scotch kind of feel to it. Let all. me see. We ought to do a shipyard examination one day. But, you know, I'm going to tell you this real fast. I don't see many Dales. Dales. I don't see many Oscar Blues beers around here anymore, and I barely ever see shipyard. Everything has been kicked off the shelf around here. Uh because of all the local beers knocking them off the shelves. Yeah. Eric, was, Eric, you were saying that you thought that Shipyard was in a decline. I think you said that a couple of years ago. I don't know. I, I don't know. Even though I have Shipyard beers very, very readily available to me since they're from Portland, Maine, and they have such a big um, production that they do, I find that most of their beers are consistently like five to six plus months out of date. Oh boy, I need to go to Trader Joe's within the next month and try to get some shipyard beers if they have them. Uh, because yeah. usually, usually they have shipyard or the KBC, which is shipyard, it's a, just a alias for uh Trader Joe's, <coughs> sure. But, but um, how far, Jay, how far do you have to drive to Trader Joe's? You within a half hour? Oh. Well, probably 35 minutes. Okay. It's only about 20, 28 miles, something like that. Is that in greater New Orleans, or do you have to go outside the city limits? Well, that's, that's what that's what that would mean. Greater New Orleans would mean like the city and the suburbs. It's it's about two miles west of the city limits in Metairie, Louisiana. Okay. Metairie. Okay, because we have one right in Brooklyn. The only problem is there's no parking. So we have to yeah. go, either go at night or go during the day and just hope we get lucky. Yeah, this one has pretty ample parking because it's in a shopping center next to, um, not Whole Foods, but what's that other one? Whatever that yuppie store is called. Oh, Wegmans. Nah, we don't have that down here. But it's, Wegmans. It's not Whole, it's uh, something market, something, I don't know, whatever they call that thing. It's not that great, but... uh. But uh, Trader Joe's is, is an odd, and you know who owns Trader Joe's? Aldi. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. We don't so, have, yeah. It, what, it what smells you, like raisins. It smells yeah. like raisins and metal. I was just going to mention that. Raisins and metal. There you go. Um, yeah. I'm getting almost like a chocolatey kind of a, kind of a malt in the background of this as well. Just a little bit of chocolate. I'm getting a little bit of a grainy kind of a complexion in the background as well. I, and, and some like maybe like a brown sugar borderline yeah. molasses and definitely brown bread. I'm getting the sweetness as well. So I guess I'm getting some of that. But the predominant yeah. for me is those dang raisins. Yeah. And even we hate to say it prunes. But yeah. uh, but I like prunes. But, you know, I don't know how many people buy beer to drink prune juice. But that's the aroma. And I know what the flavor is like because I've been sipping on it. I couldn't help it. I'm Cheers. sorry. I'm sorry. Definitely. I'm, I'm, before we t before I taste it, definitely some light smoke to it, but not a heavy, heavy, heavy no, smoke. No, that scotch we had was smell like smoked pork. <laughs> it tastes the, the it tastes a lot more. Um, not that it's very smoky. This one's not that smoky at all. But <laughs> as a flavor overall, it definitely has some smoky elements to it. Some smoky, grainy complexion. There's definitely a grainy kind of a complexion to me in the background of the beer. I'm getting the smoke too, but it's it's mild. Yeah, very mild. It's just Is a it lot of dark bread crust, like really heavy, almost black bread. If you go to German festivals, sometimes they got black bread and uh, and a little rye spice. Yes. And uh, 
uh, raisins and a little peat and all of that. Uh, and what you want me to tell you one more thing? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. It got, it got up to 81 degrees here today. Damn. <laughs> it was in the middle 50s here, which is kind of warm too. We're getting that weather tomorrow in Massachusetts. 81 degrees. I got home from work. I opened up my windows. I had to take my shirt off. Wow. So it almost hot. sounds like um, the spring, early spring in New Orleans. Yeah, not February. I told everybody when February gets here, that's when everything starts to bloom and the heat starts to set in. Now, your winter is my spring. <laughs> well, we won't get it. We won't get any 80s in February, but if we get 60s, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, Old Chubb is a good beer this time of the year for us in the Northeast, for sure. I'm actually getting besides, <coughs> oh, excuse me, besides what Jay had mentioned there and the flavors of the beer that he's getting out of it, I'm also getting, like I had mentioned in the nose, uh, I'm getting light, dark, chocolatey kind of notes, and I'm getting actually some roasty coffee notes. Not like not like a big roasty note that you would get from. Is that the Woo! New Orleans Limited? I want to apologize. I wanna, Cheers. I want to apologize for the Kansas City Southern Railroad. They don't even bother calling me. They don't. They don't warn you when they're coming by. Uh, they don't not. call. They don't send an email. They just come on down the track, blowing that horn, and they'll do it at two in the morning. They don't care. All right, sorry about that, Eric. Yeah, it's not your fault. So, so yeah, not, the coffee note, not quite like a stout or an imperial stout, but there is a light roasty coffee to me, kind of a flavor in there. And even though we mentioned that there is some sweetness that we could tell on the nose, um, I would say that the beer for me is semi-dry. It's not the sweetest beer on pl the planet Earth, but I can't really necessarily call it bone dry. But the sweetness no, that no, is there doesn't last for very long. Like one of our former examination partners taught me two years ago. She mm -hmm. said, "She said, why don't you call it medium dry? And I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to use that term. I like medium dry. That's, that's perfect where this one is for me, medium dry. And to be completely honest, in the maybe Jay can be able to describe this a little better. There's not much of it, but I'm getting just a little bit of a chalkiness to the beer. You know what I'm trying to say about that? And, and the mouthfeel, and it's got yeah. a little bit of. If you go to the, I don't know about New York because it's different up there, but down here there's a or Massachusetts there's a a, a type of molasses they sell down here. And it's called Bro Rabbit Black Strap Molasses. And this, hmm. this has a little bit of a molasses aspect to it. That I would agree with, but I'm not getting a huge, um, you know, you know, 8%. I'm not getting, I can kind of tell that it's a bigger beer. But in general, I would say that the mouth feels on the light side of medium. It's crisp. Again, we determine that it's medium dry. And I guess it's not really refreshing, but... In, in a way, the mouth, in a way, the drinkability is kind of high for what it is. What do you got what, to say there, Michael? And what you said about the um, lacing, if you take a look at the way the carbonation is coming up, it stays very solid. And look how nice the head retention is. Oh, yeah. So yeah. The, beer is, the beer is really holding up well as we drink it, which is a very. Got, got a little bit of lacing. No, it's not refreshing, Eric. But. No. Bush Light is refreshing. This is a sipper and an examination beer. Bush Light is a refreshing beer that you don't want to examine because, I mean, unless you want to spend 30 minutes talking about corn chips, but uh, you know what I mean. This is really good, but I don't know about that metallic aroma. I got to yeah. give it a knockdown on that. And I don't know how well Oscar Blues is doing because I don't see it too much anymore, but that could just be the nature of the game right now. Sure. It's a lot of it's a lot of companies I don't see much of anymore. I was telling Eric before it's well represented in my food co-op, which gets beer from a distributor. And the only reason I think it is, that generally speaking, at least on this and some of their, you know, their um, Dale's Pale, their IPA, their more moderately priced beers, we always have that. And we have some of the higher price, the ten fifty, and some of the other things. Uh, they don't yeah. seem to sell as well. No. 
the 1050 was kind of cheap down here, so I think it sold out rather quickly. 1050 around here was about 4.99 a, a a can. Wow. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, no, it was actually cheaper than that. Never mind, it was cheaper than that, so it didn't last too long. But I'll tell you what, a lot of those fancy pantsy beers did not move at all. I could still get CBS. Wow. I've never, I, I still can't find that in stores around here in my Massachusetts area. Is there still a lot of the um, stuff from Goose Island on the sure shelves? Is. There sure is. And it's sitting on the shelf in a cooler at Rouse's Grocery Store on US Highway 61. Wow. It would, that, those kind of beers would move quickly in the Northeast, quickly. Not we here. told you before how much um, Whole Foods bought up at, an, at what I thought was a good price, and yet it did after a while sit. The beginning it was moving, then it slowed up a yeah. little bit. I don't know. How we, I haven't been back to this to see if there's any of it left. But Goose Island Bourbon County Stout in 2017 went over like a lead balloon. Wow. It was $9.99 a bottle. Of course, I smashed my bottle if you watched the video. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that video. I was sitting on my porch with the heavy snow in the background. We had like a snowstorm in Louisiana, believe it or not. Wow. And if you watched the video, I don't know if y'all watched my videos, but um, I took out the bottle and I said, you know, Goose Island Bourbon County Stout. And I got my bottle open and I went to open it and it slipped out my hand and it smashed on the concrete. I saw the photo of that. Oh yeah, I God. saw the photo too. Well, the video, the, the video is only like about 20 seconds, but uh, everybody, all the comments were like, oh, damn. <laughs> I was uh, like, as bad as you feel, believe me, I felt way worse. That's a good segue. That's a good segue, uh, Michael Komaroff. What do you say about Oscar Blues? Do you say, ah, oh, damn, this sucks? Or are you really, ah, oh, damn, this is awesome? Where are you with this? What, I, what's I your like little... What's your little review so far? I, I like this beer a lot, but again, I'm partial to Scotch Ales. I think Scotch Ales are a kind of like underrepresented style, and a lot of companies don't make them, but I mean, some do. So I actually think this is a very good beer. I won't say it's great, but I think it's very, you know, it's well made. And um, I was telling Eric before, Jay, I only paid, I think, $1.46 for this 12 ounce can. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was cheap over here, too. It was the same type thing. So cheap. And I like it, too. I would give it the first time I gave it a solid A. I think I'll drop it down to an A minus this time because. Sorry. Now, Jay, with your A minus, what is your number scale? Is that a 91? Yeah, I'm about to tell you. I had it at an A before, but I didn't get that metallic aroma. I don't know what's up with that. But, uh, uh, yeah. A minus would be like a 90 to 92. So yeah, it's probably about a 91. I I've had obviously now I've had the old chub and I've had it before, not at any um not at any regularity have I had it, not like a lot have I had old chub, but I've had the old chub and I've had the uh that one one time a couple of years ago. I had the Old Chub Nitro, which is their nitrogen canned version oh, of the Old Chub. And I can see, yeah, I can see why just plain old Old Chub that we're drinking, yeah, plain old, like it's just a regular beer, but I can see why Old Chub works really well as a nitrogen beer because, I mean, yeah, it's 8%. It has a little, it has a tiny bit of like a roasty, slash smokiness i'd say it's more roasty than it is smoky a little bit of that sticky yeah it is a little sticky a little bit of that molasses slash brown sugar slash brown bready and grainy kind of a malt in the background to it definitely those plums and figs and maybe like a dark alcohol soaked cherry but yeah right right um but i can but it, it's definitely a lighter beer than most scotch ales and it's definitely it definitely has a nice smoothness about it again like i said earlier and jay agreed with me no i wouldn't call this uh refreshing but i would call this at, at the same regard i would call it still highly drinkable for what it is it's actually really smooth and delicious and i can totally see why those kind of subtleties in the style of scotch ale would lend itself to being a really great nitrogen beer. 
Okay, I have yeah. another question for the group. I looked yeah. at the bottom of my can, and mine was canned on 12 6 17. Woo! Mine's 9 11. Right. Hey, mine too. <laughs> All right, well, that's a first. Now, the other thing that I want to ask I don't know if anybody knows what this means. Underneath the canning date, it says <laughs> Big Millie, M I L L Y style. What do you think Big Millie style means? That's some guy that works at the brewery is trying to show off and type stuff in there. So his name mine, is his name is Big Millie, and he's taking credit for this can. Yeah, mine, that's people mine says show off. D A G R A Green Profit. Yeah, right. Same here as people trying to be cute. Well, sorry, folks, you weren't cute. Be a man. Don't be a mouse. The best one I've ever seen was i think it was what was it a year ago during that whole deflate gate tom brady nonsense the bottom of trillium can said free brady <laughs> wait, a wait a minute wait a minute what do you mean nonsense <laughs> um that's exactly what i mean he nonsense got, he got suspended four games but he won last year so who cares he destroyed his cell phone they lost he, this year to the yeah, not last year. That was even a bigger win than this year's win would have been. I Jay, I still can't believe that Atlanta blew that game. Because I can't believe it. All, I can't believe it because yeah. I've been dealing with Atlanta my whole life. <laughs> oh yeah, you have. have. All they oh, have yeah. to do is all they have to do when they have the big lead is just run the ball. Because there wasn't dumb. there was not time to catch them if they Good. just ran three plays and punted. You know what the website here, to go back to beer for a second, you know what the website here says at the very, very end of their description, the OscarBlues.com, at the very end of the description, and I want to see if you guys agree or disagree with it, they say it's a for the Old Chub Scotch Ale, they say it's a powerful head-turning trip for malt heads and folks – who think they don't dig dark beer. I totally agree that people that don't think they like dark beer could like this beer. Yeah, and let me say this. Notice that none of us in this three-man panel, <laughs> none of us three ever talked about the fact that it was in any way boozy. It is not boozy. It's 8%, mm. and it does not present any alcohol uh, aspect. So you could drink this if you were a fool and uh, drink one after the other. And you would say so many ridiculous things. You would be so inebriated. So I would I would tell people to drink this with trepidation because there's no booze presentation. It is 8%. That's not a joke when you're talking about beer. Uh, I would say drink one. You know, one a week. I wouldn't start guzzling Oscar Blues Old Chub, okay? But I think it is um, a really enjoyable beer. Not the greatest thing, like Michael said, but uh, for the for the price you pay, it's a winner. Although I would rather not smell metal, but well, if it was perfect, it'd be a hundred. It ain't perfect, but I don't like rape beer and beer advocates score score. Uh, paradigm but let's get off of that i'm not going to get into that uh, it, rabbit hole i was going to say eric and jay in the various beer tastings that i've done and i've included this beer several times it seems to either do very well or poorly it doesn't seem to ever <coughs> do in the middle people either like that or they don't like it i get people who say that it's not interesting enough oh mm. that's crazy i'm just telling you that's what you get from some. i can understand that i can understand that again yeah, those Obviously, I the, people, I can't. the people who do beer tastings with me are not your typical macro people. They're craft beer people. So right. they, they they seem to either like IPAs or they like stouts or they like porters, but they don't seem to like some of these off styles. And they consider this an off style. So they seem almost to be relegated against it in advance, you know, like they're hostile. So um, mm. I, I like it. And um, I like the style, and yet I'll get one where I'll do it, and everybody will like it. So I mean, it depends on the people. Different. Uh, so, so backwoods Billy is watching live. Hello, sir. Uh, he didn't. He uh, he's kind of addressing this question without actually saying that he's addressing the question to Michael Komarov. But the question to uh, 
from Backwoods Billy is defined craft beer people. Okay, I'll do. I'll do it. Craft beer people tend to not drink macros at all, or maybe at a party if somebody offered them a macro and there were no craft beers there, they might drink one. But they go out of their way not to drink any macro beers at all. And I'm not going to get into the difference whether Sam Adams is a craft beer or not because of its you know size or whatever because i would say on some on some of their beers they are and some of them probably are not right but a craft beer tends to be from smaller companies and smaller batches and it's general i mean whatever and um as everybody knows who does these with me i'm not a big macro person but if people want to drink macros go for it he says, uh, uh, Backwoods Billy Craft Beer Review says, I disagree, most lie. Ask any distribution company based on sales. No, you, you're saying that macros sell more beer. I, look, I can't dispute that. That's true. And he also says, most could not dissect a beer, thus ignorant. And, and, and some people are. Now, Billy... Now, I have a lot of experience with Backwoods Billy. Okay, Billy is a certified uh, Cicerone. Oh, really? Oh, oh cheers yeah. so to he, you, Billy. So he, I didn't know that. He is really caught up in the uh, BJCP uh, guidelines and all this. So That's cool. Join he, us sometime, please. I know he should. So Billy, he, and I'm not one of those people, but he, he gets a little irritated because people, they, they don't, and I'm not saying Michael does not. Michael mm -hmm. does, but they don't have perspective. Like they'll say things like, um, "And Billy, you ought to watch my Michelob review that I did with my friend David two days ago, and I posted it. You might find that interesting." But they'll say things like generalizations. Well, they'll they'll say things like, "Now Michael Komarov uses intelligence, but he's an intelligent person." He'll say, "Well, you know, I don't care for Budweiser." let's just use that because that's sort of like the okay. the uh, baseline of hatred in america <laughs> so he'll say i don't like budweiser it doesn't appeal to me but if people want to drink it it's fine with me then there's no skin off my back my back but then you get the the other people they'll say oh budweiser i'd rather be uh tortured while i'm alive and you know thrown off a bridge and i'd put a gun in my head i would if i went to a party and all they had was budweiser i'd only drink water it tastes like airplane glue and uh, <laughs> radioactive isotopes. You know the kind of reviews you read. And so Billy, he'll get mad and say, you know, what are you talking about? Uh, and then he'll give all these long and I, I, I would say accurate, detailed explanations of how that particular style rice lager, adjunct rice lager, is supposed to be brewed. And, and then, of course, the people, they don't respond because they're getting schooled, so they run and take their ball and go somewhere else. So, but but I, I understand Billy's viewpoint, but with Michael, he's not going to run across that kind of uh, like lack of perspective. And with no. Eric, he's not. And with me, he's not. So, but you have that tremendous lack of perspective where they take something that, okay, if you want to say it's like ho-hum and boring and dull, fine. You know, we, we'll, I'll even entertain that. But they'll go and say that it's the worst undrinkable garbage on the earth, which is totally ridiculous. I'm just saying like a Budweiser. It's not totally undrinkable. It's not garbage. It's not horrible. And I can understand if you say it's dull and it doesn't have enough character to hold your interest. Yes, I would agree with that. But to say it smells and tastes like airplane glue, get out of here, man, with all of that. You know, that's that's just... I'm rant. I'm ranting and raving for Billy. <laughs> Did anybody on Facebook see the post where Stone Brewing is now suing Keystone's owners, Miller Coors? Yes, for, I think they might no. have a case. Yes, they might no. have a case. Eric I didn't participate too much in alcohol legs. I didn't see yes. that. You, they might have a case with that because they put Stone real big on the can. You know, right? I'm saying so. They are Keystone. It's almost like oh god, really? Yeah, and they put stone on their oh, can. Fuck that. Pardon my French, but fuck that. <laughs> hey, it's really? your channel. It's your channel. They put I don't what? 
Well, go go on with that statement there. No, it's all it's it's like, and again, I don't want to be known as the supporter of craft beer against the you know macro company because if they, I guess if they feel that they're willing to defend this suit, they would it be interesting to see what the judges say. Right, because they put key real small, and then the biggest part of the can is stone. But I don't know how many people on earth, like practically nobody, right? Who in the world is going to buy Keystone Light and think it's Stone Brewing Company? Well, you know, nobody. So that's where their case might fail because a judge is going to say, and this is a big, this is an important part of a copyright infringement. It has to be shown that it will confuse the consumer. You know, you know the problem with this. I don't know how I many consumers are going to get confused by that. The problem, the part of the problem I, I see very initially, only hearing about this just now for the first time, is I found an article on latimes.com for their, for their newspaper that has a whole article that talks about this lawsuit. And, and initially, the first thing you see is, is a Greg Koch, the, yeah. the co-founder and executive yeah. chairman of Stone Brewing, all he's doing in this photo is he's holding up a can of Keystone Light where it says stone in big letters. All he's really doing in that photo is is giving free promotion to Miller Coors. He does he does like a five-minute tirade on that same thing that I sent out on the different beer blocks where he uh, talks about how even though they're a newer company than Keystone because I think they came out like started six years later but whatever. miller coors apparently is saying um their legal spokesperson for miller coors says quote since keystone's debut in 1989 prior to the founding of stone brewing in 96 our consumers have commonly used stone to refer to the keystone brand we will let the facts speak for themselves in the legal process and i guess we'll see what happens with it I guess the public, and then they say in the article, the public challenge of big beer companies by craft breweries isn't new. In October, the Brewers Association launched a campaign to, quote, buy big beer, which attempted to crowdsource $213 billion to buy InBev, AB InBev. Nearly $4 million was raised, largely helping to bring attention to their cause. And in May, which would have been, I guess, 2017, I guess. Um, San Diego breweries collaborated to make an quote, 11, 11 barrel IPA as a liquid rebuttal to the opening of 10 barrel location in the area, which was, which is another one that InBev purchased. That was another yeah, correct. craft beer that they purchased. I just don't, I just don't see how this relates to old Chubb, uh, but I just don't see how the sales of Keystone beer are going to affect the people that buy craft beer in any way, shape, or form, they, they or not. how, or how writing in giant letters "stone beer" like you were saying earlier is going to really confuse people in thinking that oh, oh, it says "stone" on the can. That must mean it's a Russian imperial stout from stone, or that must mean it's a no. uh, stone saison. What? what? What Jay is saying is true. It's really they're not the same buyers. The people who are buying Keystone are not Consumers. the same people who are buying Stone in general. So maybe the the judge hearing the case in general, the, yeah. The judge hearing the case may say there's really no foundation for it because even though you might use the name Stone, it's not the people who are going to so, be buying the Stone. So, so back what Billy means. says says that he believes that the suit is really just cheaper than advertising. I don't see Stone Brewing winning this intellectual property lawsuit and uh, Miller Coors. He says has deeper pockets, which is entirely true. He's so, definitely they so probably Miller have Coors, they, they probably it, have a legal team on 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 their side yeah. where Stone had to hire somebody to handle. Oh, well, you know. I th I think what he's saying about the deeper pockets is is that is is that Stone. Well, let me put it this way: Miller Coors is prepared, if need be, to go much farther in and, and to go much farther in the lawsuit and spend more time on the lawsuit than stone brewing would ever want to spend that would make sense but i'm going to i'm going to give you but, my i'm going to give you but my let's go back to old chubb you're right give yeah. you my rating now 
I All like right. it a little bit better than Jay. I'm going to yeah. actually give it an A. Oh, but, hey. but I'm giving it at the bottom of the A range, like a 93. So where are you? That's pretty good. So where are you? You mentioned earlier that you seem to be a fan, a pretty good fan of the Scotch Ale style. Which which are the Scotch ales that you've had in in I'm the back of your to, mind that, that are really think, good? If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think Founders makes a Scotch ale. Yeah, they do the what is it called? The Dirty Bastard? Is that or the Dirty old Bastard? That, that's, that's, I think that's Dirty Bastard, and that's and and that's similar to this. I think I actually like it better. So that might that might be in the ninety five range to me. A little, okay. I like it a little bit more. But it's funny you're talking about backwoods because because Founders also makes a backwoods bastard, which is a different style. So there's backwoods and then dirty bastard. And that's dirty. right. And the backwoods I don't think is a Scotch ale. I think it may be some. Do you, if you, do you want to look up what backwoods? Bastard yeah, I'll look, is? I'll look that up really quick. Unless backwoods Billy can tell us. Backwoods Billy, if he knows what Founders backwoods bastard. <laughs> What's a backwoods bastard, Billy? I mean, hopefully it's not me, right? But what I was saying before is Scottish ales and Scotch ales are not something which everybody makes. So, um, you know, there must be some from Scotland, too. Is there yeah, a I was going to I was going to say there's one from the uh, um, the Orkney Islands. It's yeah, called Skull a, Splitter. Is oh, there a company? That's an awesome beer. That's an awesome beer. Is that there was, is, is there a Scottish beer company called McEwen's uh, that you've heard of? McEwen's. Scotch ale, right? Oh, oh right. yeah. Okay, so I did think of one. Oh, what a beer! What a beer! What a beer! I'm sorry, I got knocked off the air. Oh, I was writing, I was writing a, I was writing a comment to Billy, and I was talking about how this macro versus craft beer struggle didn't really start until Samuel Adams began all that business around 1988. Yeah. Yes. So, um, dirty bastard. Not to cut you off there, dirty bastard. Uh, Foundersbrewing.com. Dirty Bastard is a Scotch style ale, which would be similar to what we're drinking. That's right. And and then the um the Backwoods Bastard is their barrel bourbon barrel aged Scotch ale. Okay, and that's very good too. They're both very good. Oh yeah. I don't think I've had either or, so but I might the have other to get on that train. I mentioned the McEwens I had years ago, and I thought it was amazing. Oh, what a product! What the Skull a Splitter. The Skull Splitter, I, I I forget the name of the company, but it's like the biggest, deepest, dark fruit notes this side of barley one you could ever want. And that was from the Orkney Islands off Scotland? Yeah, the Orkney Islands, yeah. Yeah, the brewery's called Orkney Brewing Company. So the only reasoning that I actually had bought the beer when I did a few years ago is it's got this big Viking, you've got this big axe on the, on, the, on the bottom. I'm like, this looks like a heavy metal album. I got to buy it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, actually called Orkney Brewing Company. That would be a cool name for a band, Skull Splitter. Jay, while you were off, I rated this a little bit higher than you. I gave it a full A at the bottom range at 93. Bottom range is pretty good for 93 right there. I'll go along with that. I am, Eric, I mean, Eric is going to give his rating. Yeah, it, for me, this is one of the more mellow. If you call this a high ABV beer which maybe some people would consider 9% more of a high ABV beer, but 8% is pretty high. Pretty dang for, high. For me, it, it, it's so smooth at 8%, and it only has a couple of minutes later when you think about it do you get the sensation of 8%. You don't even taste the 8% going down. There is little to no, practically no warmth in the mouth. No. It's a, it's a good beer. It's not a the greatest thing but it's it's certainly enjoyable yeah and that's and that's kind of where i'm going with that it's just a very mellow and easy going scotch style of ale which is why i think it works so well when it's done in the nitro cans um 93 sounds probably good. not i guess i would probably give it an 89 bordering that 90 range so is that an a minus or is that a b plus i would still give that a b plus some people have to get to 90 J before they get to a minus. So that's that's, cool. that's for that's me as well. I agree. I don't understand rape a beer advocate. They're giving an 85 and calling it outstanding. That's not outstanding. Nah. 
Yeah, also, but, while we're discussing ratings, what do you think when you look at beer advocate or at great beer and they're they're giving some of these beers from Europe threes and fours and fives? Yeah, I we've talked about. Crazy. I think they're crazy. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. talked about rape beer a n number of times, and I think, I think for the for the folks that that join and have done the chats with Jay on his channel, we'll be seeing the beers. And I think the people that we all associate, which are the same people that we all associate with, I think we have a consensus that rape beer and the people that use rape beer have more of a bias towards beer styles than the people of Beer Advocate do. And not that Beer Advocate doesn't have its own personal bias among some of the users, but we, I think we find that rape beer <coughs> has even greater bias. If they don't like a beer style, then they're just going to rate it low. Jay, have you noticed any difference in rate beer since it was partially acquired by InBev? Mm -mm. No, because the thing about it is just individual people like myself or yourself. It's just probably, a it's, it's a rating system. Yeah, they're just writing their own reviews. Now, if you don't pay attention to the score and you just look at the written reviews from say like the last month when you pick any beer, they're pretty mm -hmm. accurate. They're pretty accurate. Like they'll have you'll say to yourself. Well, that's just what I was saying about it. Like we said tonight, I said the same thing. So that's the good thing about Rape Beer and Beer Advocate. If you read their recent written reviews and you just ignore the score, you'll oftentimes say, well, this is just like the, the same characteristics I noticed. And I think that's the important thing. But why do they fracture these Euro lagers? They fracture them. They almost make them seem like they're not really beer. They're biased. I mean, se severe stuff. Like, they, they don't really have much in the 20, 30, and 40 range. They give those single digits, and that's right. insane. And I'm not a huge Euro Locker fan by any stretch of the imagination, but those beers are real beers. I know, Eric, how do you feel about Euro Lagers? You've had some of them through the years, I'm sure. I, by far, would rather drink a European-style pale lager than I would want to jump onto a um i'm gonna say new england or i, I let, let me say that again i would by far rather jump on a european pale lager and buy that and drink that than i would a adjunct style american lager or one that was brewed in mexico or Agreed. canada I, 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 I think i think there are i think both of those styles for lagers are very subtle in their flavors although I feel like the European style lagers show just a tad bit, if if not an exponential amount, when you look at the two styles. Compared to American beers, American lagers, European lagers show much greater range of hops and malts in their beers. Right. I which agree. Is what I like about it. I I agree. But it's and I and I do review them in my book, and I get when I review it, I try to be fair. But I don't usually give stuff less than, you know, sixes and sevens out of 10. So when I see, when I look at, I do look at the reviews yeah. and I see um, nine is, is the rating for, in rate beer and then yeah. it's 75 by style. So they, they're, what they're saying is it's true to its style. I mean, it's getting it 75 out of a hundred, but it's like one of the most awful things they've ever tried, which to me is ridiculous. And it can't be totally based on what their reviewers are saying because yeah. it ha there has to be some bias in it. The way it's figured out. Yeah, rape did, beer. Did you got knocked off again? Did you just get knocked off, or you went off to do something? Yeah, I got knocked off, but um, because I kept trying to do other things. But I, I agree with what you said. That's insane. Like they're gonna call something like uh, uh, like Cronenberg a three out of a hundred. Nah. Luckily, <laughs> they're giving Oscar Blues the old chub here. They're giving it a 96 out of 100 as a beer, and then as a Scotch ale, they give it a 97 out of 100. At least they seem to be kind of reputable and favorable towards that beer. It seems a little too high, though, in that case. That's yeah, potentially, but, but at least those two ratings seem to um, align together. What did Beer um, Advocate give it? Eric, can you look up Beer Advocate? Yeah, let me open that one up again. Beer Advocate is giving... Let me open that back up again. I apologize for that. No 
Uh, oh, okay, I, I don't have that open. Old Chub. Here it is. Old Chub, Scottish style ale, which it's really a Scotch ale. That's sort of confusing. Now, now it's a number uh, system instead yeah. of a bigger number. It's a four point out of, yeah, it's in the four range. Out of 5,293 reviews or just plain old ratings, it gets a 4.01 out of five. Now, now the now the the really confusing part about Old Chub is is that even though Oscar Blues is calling this beer on the can and of most of their advertising a Scotch ale, they still say this jaw dropping Scottish strong ale. Now, like I said earlier, Scottish ales are actually right slightly back. different are slightly different from Scotch and wee heavy ales. Another name for a Scotch beer is a wee heavy. Isn't that right, Jay? I think so. And I don't think it's all that different. And um No, it's kind of like saying it's kind of like saying premium lager and then calling a lighter style of the beer light lager. It's the same kind of a thing. But they say on the website of Beer Advocate that Scottish ales, um, the Scottish style of ales break down into light, heavy, and export. And they say Scottish ales traditionally go through a long boil in the kettle for a caramelization of the wort. Overall hop character is low light, floral or herbal, allowing its signature malt profile to be highlighted. And then smoky characters are also common. But then they say for a scotch we heavy ale that they traditionally go through a long boil for the caramelization. And this produces a deep copper to brown color which is what um, we got. Which compared to those Scottish ales, they're sweeter and fuller bodied, um, more alcohol, obviously, with more pronounced malty caramel and roasted malt flavor. And they can kind of have a low tea like bitterness, which I can kind of see when I hear that. I can kind of yeah, see a little bit of that. That's what we got, a Scotch ale, I think. Yeah. Well, I gotta go, y'all, but uh thank right. you. Jay, before you go, let me ask you if you ever had this before. I'm about to open it. I'm going to talk to Eric for a while. Have Ooh. you gotten this at Trader Joe's before? What is that called? Oh, it's yeah. Called drive through Red. Oh, uh, yeah. I did a video review, and I loved it. Sounds okay. good, man. Well, cheers, Jay. Thank Jay, you for joining. Are you, Jay, are you going to come on Friday to Tyler's Porter Review? No, because I have baseball-related issues to deal okay. with. Okay. All right, so try to watch it. We'll yeah. shout you out, sir. Try to watch it. All troubles. All right. Ty Tyler's, Cheers. Tyler's trying to spread his brand and get as many people involved. He's doing good so far. I like his style. I know. He's doing well. All right. Y'all take care now. Cheers. Right, we'll see you soon. All right. I'm going to close out the review here so we can go to okay. Overtime Live. Backwoods Billy, you're the man. We have a uh, – since last week, I think. Tell us if we're wrong before we hang it up here. Uh Gabriel Salia joined us last week. He's from Phoenix, Arizona, and it's like 5 o'clock in almost 6 o'clock his time. So you're the man as well. Tyler was watching. Where was John and Neil bit. tonight, Eric? Don't know. I contacted him. He wasn't responding. Maybe, maybe but he had other stuff going on. Potentially, but Michael Komarov, Old Chubb, 93, A-. minus. Eric like Fromfelter, right 89. And Jay gave it a 91. So, I so mean, right, right in the we're middle. We're not so far off, even if yeah, I'm a B plus the, and you're an A minus. I'm case. closer to Jay, but that is a really great beer that for, I think, for Michael Komaroff and I is fairly easy to acquire. So, that's a cool part of the beer. That does not mean that it is a macro beer, but it does have some distribution because of the various breweries they have in our country so and the alcohol is well covered and hidden so you can drink it without worrying about getting i'm not you if you drink a lot of it you can, yeah you can that's you. exactly why you should try the nitro because it even smooths it out further than that so michael komarov uh brooklyn new york i am eric fraunfelter that's my real name people thomas metal 75 uh, goodbye backwards bastard Goodbye. And as I say on my channel, backwards Billy. Ba you're a backwards bastard, Billy. Until next time, keep tasting those great beers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. I will see. No, we. Hey, Eric, what we'll did you, you decide soon. about next week? Are we Good question. I have this. I, I don't have.
the calendar of events in front okay. of me. As of, I apologize. I, I, it was I, listed as Brooklyn Brewery as of last week. Has that's any correct. change yeah. happened yet? No, no, that's correct. Okay, I'm in. You you want to do that? You I'm cool in. with that? I'm in. What did I what what, what did you write down for the Brooklyn, for the Brooklyn next Brewery week? is next week, then six point. Hold on. Let me write that. Let me write that down again. All right. Yeah. Six points the twenty eighth. Then yeah. sour sour beers on March seventh, and then Samuel Smith beers on the fourteenth. Okay. Yeah. That, everything that, is subject to change depending on what the group feels like and everybody yeah. else. I yep, mean, that I works. Know. That's I do recall that. Yep. Let's do let's do Brooklyn Brewery beers as far as the group is allowed. It, it is allowed as far as a panel of people can review and join for that beer. So. Tentatively okay. look forward to that, people. And until next time, peace. Okay, Eric. It's been a good one.